Hey everybody, today we're going through 2D character movement animation. I'm going to take a square sprite, just toss it in the scene, hit T, scale it up like a character would be, a little bit taller than they are wide. I'm going to change the name to player. Alright, now we're going to go down to component, add in a 2D box collider, that's 2D physics box collider 2D. All those sittings should be pretty fine. Going to add another component, again Physics 2D, and then down to Rigid Body 2D. Everything's good there. Make it sticky just for fun. Oh, another thing, if you want, you can freeze the rotation on the Z axis. That'll stop your character from flipping over, but it depends on what you're making. Oh, another thing, I added in another square, also gave it a box collider 2D. I tagged it ground, that's going to be important for later. I'm going to change our player to green. And as we can see, our player is already physics active and stops when they collide with the ground. I'm going to add another component, and this is going to be a finite state machine. Here we're going to define the inputs and behavior of our player. We're going to add a new action. In this case, it's going to be an add force action, 2D. Make sure it's 2D. And we're going to toggle it and switch it to 7 on the y-axis. We're then going to select that action and duplicate it. Control c Control v And switch Y back to 0. And change the x-axis to 3. This is going to add force on the x-axis in a positive value, so to the right. And we're going to do that again and make it negative 3. Then we're going to add another state and we're going to duplicate our x-axis force over there with control C, control V. We're then going to add two more states. That's right click add new state. I think you see what we're doing here. Copy the one that is positive x value over to the right one, and the one that is negative x value over to the left one. I'm then going to select all these states in the original, or all these actions in the original state, and delete them. Now, for our inputs, we're going to go to get key down. We're going to do something similar here and just duplicate things and switch up a few things. Uh, we'll start out with the up arrow. We're going to select new event and just put up. Then we're going to right click on our starting state, add transition, up, and then drag up there. We're now going to add in a collision 2D event. And this is why we tagged our other object ground. You can just select collider tag and then ground. We'll also do a new event and hit stop. Now stop is going to represent our starting state and we're in our jumping state. So I'm going to duplicate that and put it onto all the states and then create a transition from every other state that's not our starting state to our starting state. And that's going to be a stop transition. Now you see our player is not jumping at this point, but it is switching the states. That is because I forgot to toggle impulse on the force mode. There we go. 
and you can see the states transitioning so whenever you press the key it goes up and whenever it senses the collision with the ground it goes back down now we're going to duplicate our get keys down and then switch them to our right arrow and left arrow respectively and then add new states or new events for each one corresponding so right for right left for left and then we'll just add those corresponding transition events so left and right we already have our up We're also going to add in a get key up function. This is so whenever we stop moving left or right, we will transition back to our stop state. So on the right, I will switch it to right arrow and send event will be stop. Left, switch it to left arrow, send event stop. That's going to naturally tie right back into our transition that is already being used by our collision 2D event. All right, now when we play, we should be able to jump and move left and right. Again, I forgot to toggle uh, impulse on there, as well as um, for, for the left and right, because it's a continuous force, you want every frame toggled so that it applies that force um, over every frame. And it looks like, yes, that needs to be set to impulse as well. All right, now our character moves, but it's way too fast. So we just need to adjust uh, the amount of force that we're applying on the x-axis. So we're going to change 3 on the right state to 0 0.5 and then on the left state to negative 0.5 on the x-axis. There we go, that's much better. Alright, let's build a quick little scene for this guy to move around in. I'm just going to select our uh, little bottom rectangle down here. Control D to duplicate and then T to transform. build a quick little obstacle course just to test it on alright seems okay but it would be nice to be able to move left and right while in the air even though that isn't very true to life, uh, <laughs> it is more fun that way in my opinion. So we're going to select our get key down options and copy those and just paste them up into our jump state. So while we're in the air and then we just have to uh, add, add in the appropriate transition. So left and right and then drag them over there. And then while we're at it, let's make it so we can transition from moving left directly to moving right and vice versa. So I'm going to copy the right arrow action and put it on the left and mark it left and then the left arrow action on the right and then add the corresponding transitions back to each other so that they're able to switch between each other based on your key press without having to worry about that stop state. All right, our player's now able to move while they're in the air. 
which makes things a lot more fun. It's a little wonky, but obviously you can tweak things. That pretty much covers the character movement. Uh, now let's get down to some quick animation techniques. Um, I tried to make this as basic as possible, so we're using a quick little stick figure animation sketch that uh, my girlfriend drew up for me. You can see the image right here, and I just took it into the sprite editor and chopped it up. So you can select each one. To do that, you just want to pop up to Slice, and the automatic settings should be fine. And just select Slice. If you're not able to draw a stick figure, then uh, just make your character something else. I'm going to drag that in, and it's going to automatically create an animation for us. And I'm going to name that. Then I'm going to scale it to the size of our player. And now what we can do is, uh, not that, now what we can do is uh, take that animation that we just put in there and just hit Control D with it selected. And then on the sprite renderer, I'm going to hit X and flip it on the X axis. Can then do the same thing, so chop it up um, with a jump animation or whatever animation you guys are putting in. Make sure, again, the sprite mode is set to multiple. I'm going to drop that in and then just name the animation. I'm going to scale that to the appropriate size and just overlay it right across everything else. Let's see, we've got a left, right, and jump. We need a standstill. I didn't have her draw an idle animation, so we'll just snatch up a frame from the walk animation and drop that in there. Because it's a single frame, it won't ask you to name that because it's not uh, technically an animation, it's just a single sprite. But we're going to go ahead and name it stop, and that's going to correspond with our stop state in our finite state machine. as well as the walk right animation and walk left animation, which I'm naming those now. That is a good habit to get into. Um, this is a very, very simple setup, and things can get very complex very fast. So, got those named. I'm going to select them all and then drop them right on top of the player, and that's going to parent the player to those objects. I'm then going to go in and deactivate this toggle right here, which is going to deactivate each object except for uh, stop. And I'm going to turn off the sprite renderer for our original player object. This is what we end up with. So we're getting close. We have a player there, and we do have him moving uh, throughout physical space, which is nice. But he's not playing his animations yet. That's going to be pretty easy to set up, however. We're going to use a very similar technique to what we did. Um, essentially, it's going to line up directly with the finite state machine. So, with our start state active, or our stop state, we're going to go in and add in a activate game object action. And we're going to specify the game object. We're going to make it this stop animation. Then we're going to duplicate that. It's control C, control V. Going to change it to deactivate, so you untoggle activate and then drop in our walk right and then do that with the rest of our animations as well walk left and jump so 
So what we've done here is set up a state where the only active animation is our stop state and it makes sure the rest are deactivated. I'm going to select all those, copy them, and then paste them into left. And then we're just going to toggle stop off and walk left on. We're then going to do that for each corresponding action. So whenever he moves right, we want to toggle walk right on and all others off. And of course, for the jump, you want to make sure your jump animation is toggled on so it's playing and all others are toggled off. Alright, now we have some animations playing, we have some movement going, it is looking a lot better. It does look like the jump animation is looping, which is uh, fine, uh, the, they're supposed to be looping automatically, but we don't want it to do that. That's going to be a pretty easy fix with Unity's built-in animator system. I'm just going to select the jump animation, right click, hit create new state empty state and then right click on player jump add transition down to that empty state there we are now it's not perfect and obviously there are a lot of different methods to do a lot of different things uh, while you're making games so it may not be ideal for your character to be a an actual physics active object um, in a lot of cases, it's not. I really enjoy playing with the physics, so I usually do when I can. But this is one way to set up things, and it may be uh, good for your purposes. It may not. It's important to take a look at things and try and understand what's best for your game. Either way, I hope this has been helpful. I appreciate you guys coming by. If you stuck around this long, I really appreciate it. Please like, share, and subscribe, and hopefully I can come back with some more for you soon. Have a good one. Ba-doom! 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 